Grip fighting is incredibly important in all positions in jujitsu, the back included. Because if you can understand and implement proper grip fighting from the back, then you will increase your submission rate substantially. You need a system. So what makes this back attack system so effective? It's all based around isolating your opponent's grips, as it's your opponent's grips that they'll use to defend against submissions, and it's your grips that you'll use to attack. And if you deny them the ability to grip, then you take away their ability to defend. We will look at a complete system on how to isolate your opponent's grips, but first let's go over some back control basics. Rarely ever are you actually on your butt when you have your opponent's back, yet this is where submissions from the back are taught so often. In reality, when you have your opponent's back, you're going to be on the side for the majority of the time, and when you're on your side, there's two positions that you can be in, either on the overside or the underside. Which side you're on is determined by your arm positioning. If you're on the side where your arm is over the shoulder, then you're on your overside. And if you're on the side where your arm is underneath our armpit, then you're on the underside. When Jiu-Jitsu was in its more primitive stages, the overside was known as the strong side, and the underside was known as the weak side. But these terms are outdated, and there's nothing weak about the underside. Both sides offer great but different finishing options. So there's an overside and an underside when it comes to your arms. Now when it comes to your legs, you have a top hook and a bottom hook. Your hooks are your legs, and they control your opponent's hips. The hook that's closest to the mat is the bottom hook, and the hook that's closest to the ceiling is the top hook. Your hooks control your opponent's hips, meanwhile your arms control your opponent's upper body. In the standard back control position, a standard seatbelt grip with hooks, you have no control of your opponent's grips and they can and will use them to defend. Now if you take away your opponent's grips, then you minimize their ability to defend. Now let's look at how to do just that. Trapping your opponent's grips with your hooks frees up your arms to attack freely. Generally, it's much easier to trap your opponent's top arm using your top hook than it is to trap your opponent's bottom arm with your bottom hook. This is because their weight on your bottom leg limits the mobility of that leg. So you have more mobility with your top hook to trap your opponent's arm. And there's a system to do just that, the straight jacket system. The straight jacket system is a grip fighting sequence largely popularized by John Donahar, although it was used by top guys before Danahar's popularity, such as Marcelo Garcia. The straight jacket system is performed from the underside. To enter into the straight jacket system, you grip their top arm with your bottom arm, and their bottom arm with your top arm. Now using your bottom arm, you pass off your opponent's top arm to your top hook, and using your top arm, you pass off your opponent's bottom arm to your bottom arm. Now that that tongue twister is over, let's go into more detail. Trapping the top arm. The more you lift your opponent's top arm up by using your bottom arm, the more open you make their elbow. And the more open their elbow is, the easier it is to hook onto using your top hook. When you hook onto the top arm with your leg, there are multiple ways to position it. You can simply just keep it where it is. You can hook your leg behind their back, which is not my favorite and it's harder for me to maintain control due to my short legs. You can transition to a body triangle, which is a very dominant position to be in. This is also very difficult for me and much easier for people with long legs. You can also cross your feet, which is my preferred method of control. You just have to be careful not to cross your feet in the middle, below your opponent's hips, or you risk them hitting the UNO reverse card by submitting you. This is because there's an ankle lock available when you cross your feet in the middle, below your opponent's hips. But if you keep your feet crossed above the hips or off to the side, then there's no threat. See here, my opponent tries to hit an ankle lock as my feet are positioned in the middle, but they're not deep below his hips, so there's no real threat. Trapping the bottom arm. So you've trapped your opponent's top arm with your top hook, but how do you trap their bottom arm? by passing their bottom arm from your top arm to your bottom arm. If they're not gripping your wrist, it's often quite easy to do. <laughs> you just pass it over. But if they're gripping your wrist, you can peel their grip off by lifting up on the side of their hand. Here's a couple more examples before we move on. If you really want to add insult to injury, then you can trap both their top arm and their bottom arm with your hooks. After entering into the straight jacket, you can bring your opponent to the opposite side so that your top arm with their arm already trapped becomes your bottom hook. And now you can trap their top arm which was their bottom arm. This is a pretty satisfying way to submit someone. 
Now let's move on to submissions, but first, a quick word from the sponsor of today's video, Element. Training jiu-jitsu can be incredibly taxing on the body. For example, because we sweat a lot on the mats, we lose a lot of electrolytes, the primary one being sodium. And when sodium isn't adequately replaced, it's common to experience muscle cramps and fatigue, both of which are a big no-no in jiu-jitsu. And that's why I started drinking Element. It's a tasty electrolyte drink mix with a science-backed electrolyte ratio of sodium, potassium, and magnesium. It also comes with no sugar, no coloring, no artificial flavors, none of that stuff. And it's used by everyone from NBA and NHL players, Navy SEALs, Olympic athletes, and everyday exercise enthusiasts. Right now, Element is offering my listeners a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serving packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors or share Element with a salty friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash Jordan Teaches. This deal is only available through my link. You must go to drinklmnt.com slash Jordan Teaches. Submissions. There are multiple submissions available from the straight jacket, but let's start with the rear naked choke. Once their arms are trapped, it's their no arms versus your one arm. Their last resort is to close space by tucking their chin. My preferred method of getting underneath the chin is to slide my thumb underneath it, starting at one side of the chin and working all the way through. Sometimes it'll take multiple attempts to penetrate, but be patient and disciplined and you will get there. If needed, you can crawl your hand on the shoulder to gain more and more ground. Another way I like to get underneath the chin is to lift up their nose with my wrist and shoot my hand underneath their neck before they can bring their chin back down. Once you're under the chin, you can take your underarm out and slide the hand behind their head as you grip your bicep. To make the transition of your grip safer, you can bring your opponent to the other side first, to your overside before taking your underarm out and using it for the choke. This is easiest when your opponent is bridging into you. The reason why you might want to bring your opponent to the other side first is that when you take your bottom arm out, that transition of grips and control may create an opening for your opponent to escape. This isn't to say it's wrong to do so. Every transition of grips in Jiu-Jitsu has some element of risk and escape opportunity because you momentarily reduce your control. But by keeping your head in proper position underneath theirs severely limits their ability to escape as you transition. Alternatively, you could also finish with a one-arm rear naked choke. If you can't get underneath the chin or you feel like making enemies, you can instead perform a mouth smother. What's your opinion on mouth smothers? For me, it's only something that I do on my friends or in a competition if it's legal. <laughs> I personally don't think it's a big deal, but I wouldn't use it on people I don't know very well. All right, back to the rear naked choke. The traditional way to finish a rear naked choke is to position your inner elbow to the middle of your opponent's neck and bring your elbows together to compress their neck with your forearm and your bicep. However, the modern and more effective way, in my opinion, is to rotate your elbow as if you're trying to bring your elbow behind your opponent's back. Doing so will put pressure on the carotid artery primarily on one side, the side of which your forearm is located. Applying more force to one carotid artery primarily is actually how the majority of chokes in Jiu-Jitsu work, and I'll go over that in more detail in another video, as well as my Jiu-Jitsu theory course, which is soon going to have a whole new section on grips and submissions. Check it out, the link is in the description. Rear Triangle If you end up high on your opponent's back with your hips closer to their shoulders, the rear triangle is a great option. You can get up high on your opponent's back either by your opponent squirming lower or by you shrimping out to get higher. Once you're there, take a Kimura grip to push your opponent deeper into your hips and bring your top hook higher to above your opponent's shoulder. You want your leg between their ear and their shoulder. Now position your calf so it's parallel with the side of your opponent's neck the cue to see if your leg positioning is correct is if your knee is on or close to the mat. If your knee is lifted above the mat, your calf will be positioned over the esophagus and crush your opponent's throat. You want to have your legs completely wrapped around your opponent's neck with no space between to have a good choke bite. If you can't adjust your knee positioning to get a good bite, instead you can just switch to an armbar. Armbar. Once you have your opponent's top arm trapped, you can transition to a Kimura grip. 
Now push their head with your forearm. This will create room for you to bring your top hook over and in front of the face. And now you just need to break your opponent's defensive grips and get the tap. This Kimura grip armbar was the armbar that I hit on my amateur MMA debut. It's special to me and hitting this armbar often brings back memories. Although I didn't do it by trapping the arm first. You don't need to trap your opponent's arms for any of these submissions. You don't need to use the straight jacket. But doing so certainly makes getting the tap a lot easier. Crucifix. If your opponent manages to clear your bottom hook, you can transition to the crucifix by hooking their top arm with your bottom hook. Now you can hit a really cool arm bar by pressing your hips into their elbow as you extend their wrist back using your calf. This is one of the coolest submissions that there is. The straight jacket system is great, but now let's look at other ways to trap arms. Straight jacket alternatives. The straight jacket system isn't the only way to trap arms. Sometimes your opponent's arm is simply available to trap, and you can just bring your top hook over their arm. From the overside, you can pass their top arm with your top arm to your top hook. From turtle, if your opponent's hand is on the mat, you can use that opportunity to throw your hook over it. Alright, thanks for sticking around till the end of the video. If you're still here, please leave a comment or a fist bump, and I'll see you guys next time.